All candidates participating in the forum were asked the same questions and were given the same amount of time to respond. This video was filmed by QAC TV and the questions were selected by editor Angela Price from Reader Suggestions. I'm Nicole Romeo, reporting for the Bay Times and Record Observer. I'm here with Phil Duminil, who is an incumbent District 3 Commissioner and a Republican. Thank you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. In two minutes or less, tell us a little, bit, a little bit about yourself and why you would like to continue being a commissioner. Two minutes or less. Um, well, first of all, um, my wife and I moved here back in 2001. Uh, I have uh, three children, uh, all attending uh, public schools here in Queen Anne's County. I ran for office in 2010, um, hoping that uh, with some like-minded commissioners, we can make a difference and change the direction in which the county was going. It was in tough fiscal shape. Um, fast forward to where we are today, we're in much better financial shape than we've been in a long time. I still think that there's lots of work that needs to be done. Um, so therefore, I'm going to defend my seat uh, as the commissioner in District 3. Um, it's important. We've, our commercial tax base is, is up. It's, uh, it's the highest it's been in years. And obviously, with the commercial tax base up, um, the burden on the taxpayers as far as property taxes are concerned, um, is uh, a less of a burden. Obviously with your commercial tax base numbers up and um, more income and revenue coming to the county for that type of, uh, of it, um, that type of uh, revenue generation, income to the county, it le relieves the burden for our taxpayers. Thank you. In two minutes or less, explain what you believe are the biggest issues facing the county. Um, there are several. Um, you know, there are some issues that are contentious. But I think some of the challenges is, is where we're going to grow. Um, I think it's important that um, with some mandates coming out of, uh, of Annapolis, um, some legislation, some, some issues that were not necessary legislative issues that, you know, had, um, that has a lot to do with the county and how we're going to grow and where we can grow. Uh, I think it's important that we take a look at the comprehensive plan. Um, it was set in place in 2010 when we were running for office. And traditionally, you look at your comprehensive plan every six or seven years. It doesn't mean you can't go in and do it earlier. But our comprehensive plan is about four years old. And I think with some of these things that are coming out of Annapolis, telling us where we can grow and how we can grow, um, trump our comprehensive plan. So we need to reopen it, take a look at it, and, and reevaluate the areas where we need to, to focus on. Thank you. In one minute or less, what is your position on the proposed Four Seasons development? Um, this was a project that's obviously been in the pipeline for, for years and years, long before my wife and I even moved over here. Um, I believe that um, it's a good project. I think that the developers, uh, Kehov Manian, who are, you know, whose project it is, I think they vetted the process. Um, they uh, met every single required need. I think their willingness to work with this set of commissioners on adjusting the DRRA. I think we've come out of it uh, in pretty good shape. They've scoped down the size of the project. They've donated some land for an eco park to the county. I think they've been good partners uh, from the beginning and have showed that they've been a good partner. It's obviously um, in, the, in the Board of Public Works in Annapolis. It's in front of them now. I, I think we have vetted it the best way we could. Under the circumstances, considering they've done everything that they needed to do to bring the project here, I think the fact that it's an age-restricted project, um, uh, it won't have the impact on our schools, which is a good thing, obviously. Um, but it, it, for the most part, uh, I'm supportive of it. Thank you. In one minute or less, what is your position on the public sewer for Southern Kent Island? Uh, it's a, it's, there's a huge need. There's an absolute huge need. Obviously, again, you've got a project that is going to have um, some effect on growth down uh, Route 8. But if you take a look at the bigger picture, and understand that this project will eliminate a lot of the failing septic sewer systems down there from dumping raw sewage into the bay. Those are concerns. Um, I think with the lot consolidation legislation that we've introduced, taking those lots from 1,500 to roughly 650, 600 is a compromise. Um, it shows that we're, we're focused on the possibility that you could have a lot of growth when you bring sewer down, but sewer is needed, and I think the compromise of the lot consolidation legislation and reducing those number of lots that would be buildable is probably um, what makes it more palatable. Um, but certainly we have issues with the s s raw sewage going into the bay, and, and that's, that's certainly a concern. Thank you. 
In one minute or less, what is your position on a public pool for the county and the YMCA project? Well, at one point we had a public pool. Um, uh, it was at the community college. Um, the pool was going to be shut down because they're rebuilding, because they're actually building an, a, a nursing facility, uh, not a nursing facility as much as allied the Allied Nursing Training Program there. So we're going to have a brand new facility there that can train nurses. Um, the YMCA stepped up to help us manage the pool, but um, it was a lot of money. It was costing the county uh, taxpayers thousands and thousands of dollars a year to keep the pool open. Uh, there's a need for a pool here in the county. Um, I swam in high school. Uh, I know that um, we have some competitive uh, swim teams at both our high schools and it's difficult for them to have to travel to Easton to to train so if we could have a facility here um, that allows both schools to train and have you know competition meets um, that's a good thing and I think the YMCA will help bring us bring that rate bring that to reality thank you in one minute or less what is your position on the new parking permit required to access public beaches at any at county parks commonly being called the beach permit um, this was a recommendation that came from the Parks Advisory Board. Um, the Parks Advisory Board is a commission that is uh, appoint its members are appointed by the commissioners, and they serve um, to help the commissioners make educated decisions. Um, we have some problems uh, with our beaches, with cleanliness, people using them after hours, uh, trash being left behind. We have a policy that you carry in, carry out the trash that you bring in, uh, but it hasn't worked. Part of the, the problem is um, that when we took office, with the county realignment that took place in 2012, we cut a lot of our man, um, a lot of the, the departments, uh, cut them by 30, 35, 40 percent. So a lot of that was staffing. Um, so a lot of the things that were, that, that were in place before we came into office, we had to cut. One of them was personnel. Um, to manage those beaches and keep them clean and, and so this is a fee that we're going to collect that will be dedicated to uh, making sure that those beaches uh, stay clean. Thank you. In one minute or less, please describe your plan for achieving the county's stated goals of controlling growth while promoting economic development. Um, again, I had mentioned earlier, we have to take a look at our comprehensive plan. Um, we have designated growth areas, um, both for commercial and residential. Our existing comprehensive plan says we have roughly 3,000 um, available homes that can be built. Now, you know and I know that it's not something that's going to take place in four or five years. Um, but we have the capacity in our sewer system for it. Um, but when you have people, when you have the population density, then the businesses will come. We want movie theaters, we want bowling alleys, we want things like this. But to get um, folks to be interested in coming to Queen Anne's County and open up these businesses, they have to be able to justify the population to warrant that type of expense on their part. So, um, But we've got economic development incentive fund. We've got a group of people that are reviewing applications for that. Um, and we're doing everything we can to try to promote Queen Anne's County. We're looking at bringing somebody in specifically to that will be their only responsibility is to promote tourism and economic development in the county. Thank you. And finally, in one minute or less, would you like to revisit any of the issues we've discussed or add anything we've missed talking about? Um, I think really uh, the sewer down Route 8, um, you know, we have um, mandatory uh, reductions, in our TMDLs, total maximum load uh, reductions of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment that are going into our bay due to these failing septic systems. So we, um, as a county, along with other counties in Maryland, have been tasked by the Maryland Department of the Environment and the federal equal to that department to reduce these loads of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment that are going into our bay. With this sewer down Route 8, um, we're going to accomplish close to 33% of our reduction of, of nitrogen that goes into the bay. So these are credits that we're getting and, um, towards our, our watershed implementation plan, our WIP team, our WIP plan to try to hit those numbers that we are mandated to hit by 2025. This is going to be a huge expense in hitting those reductions by 2025 to the taxpayers. So if you think about sewer down Route 8 being um, a, a project that's going to help us reach those reduction goals and solve a problem with, with uh, contaminating the bay, I'd say the sewer is probably one of the most important things we're working on now. Thank you. And thank you for participating in our forum. Ah, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Nicole. To watch other candidates who have appeared in this series, 
please go to either the QIC TV YouTube channel or visit myeasternshoremd.com. Thank you for watching.